spasm attacks. They go, and then fall asleep. There's so much bullshit. Completely white. I'm like, ah, ah. That seems, that seems to have gone. So yeah, I really need you to shove your fingers right in my butt and, and really work away that. Oh, this is officially uh, a week since uh, my sciatica kicked in again, and oh, I'm totally having with like I'm sh oh, shivering. I'm so cold. I'm having withdrawal symptoms from bloody codeine again. Um, codeine uh, that you get in your uh, stronger painkillers um, is a or sometimes known as cocodamol. So it's codeine and. Um, uh, paracetamol and the ones I get from the doctor about 30 milligrams codeine 500 milligrams paracetamol and the doctors are like yeah just keep taking it it's fine um, but uh, although the, the the ache in my leg is sore and very achy at certain points and sometimes debilitating uh, in terms of its ache um, it's more the whole body Ugh. whole body <laughs> Yes! Oh my god, withdrawal! So, uh, obviously whenever it kicked in, I was like, holy crap, I used the previous medication which I had had from uh, about a year ago, I guess. No, 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 from, it would have been from um, April this year. Um, and uh, so it wouldn't have been out of date, it's not like it was like three years old or anything like that. Um, and uh, had about, in total, about half a packet of it's about 25 of them. I've still got three in the house. Uh, but again, it was one of those things where the sciatica pain was so much that it's waking you up during the night and all you want is something to knock you out when you're trying to sleep, especially if you have to go to work. Um, so I got a little bit more functional uh, with um, with the pain. So the painkillers make you functional. You kind of go, aha, yeah, it's not that bad. At one point I thought, hey, I could almost jog here. I was happily walking down from dropping Logan off in one of my previous videos, uh, walking down and showing him in, and like taking him into the oh, into the nursery and stuff like that, and uh, and in terms of like picking Logan up and moving around, that's not a problem. It's not. I don't have a spinal uh, pain just now. I just have this all over uh, because uh, that three uh, was, it, was it even just yesterday. I said right, uh, the pain is now just that level of oh, discomfort. I'll just stop the codeine, cocodamol. Um, and uh, and just uh, go para uh, go on to ibuprofen because because what I think this definitely is is piriformis syndrome, which uh, if you Google that it's a muscle in your butt, um, which for me it was definitely a muscle spasm, my my butt spazzed out, and uh, with that spazzing there was clearly swelling and damage and irritation to the nerve which has caused pain all the way down um, my leg and you know, so it'd be like oh my ankle is so sore oh my calf is killing and today my calf has been uh, teetering on the edge of having full-on spasm attacks again <laughs> like uh, I was walking outside the house and uh, I was like oh 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 and I was like what's wrong with you oh my, uh, my calf my calf oh no I survived it's okay it didn't go but oh, it's just so tight, and I think it's just once you come off the the codeine, everything just goes, and 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 I can totally see why people get addicted to that shit because when you're on it, you're like pain's gone. When I come off it, if I still have a little bit of pain there, the little bit of pain is still there. But then so is the withdrawal effect from from codeine. It's just it's just astonishing. It really it's just like. So this, and I imagine this is probably like a hundredth of what it's like if you're coming off something like heroin or, I don't think people come off cocaine, um, oh, but just like my head is sore, my joints are sore, my sore bit's sore, I'm freezing cold, I've been using hot water bottles, and I was thinking, are the hot water bottles making me cold, but I haven't used them at all today, and I'm still shivering off. Uh, and I've been using ice packs. Ice packs don't make me cold. They're just like a pain because they're so cold. Uh, if that makes any sense. They're not like, oh, I feel chilly. And because it's fairly uh, lo um, specific where it's located, um, it's not like, oh, I, I get a shiver from my ice pack because it's also it's usually through my trousers or through my underpants. Um, it's like in my trousers, 
against my underpants, under shorts, uh, things, uh, boxer shorts, um, and uh, so it's not touching bare skin, and it's just like oh, afterwards like oh, that's that's a little bit like sharp, like somebody's like oh, pick it away, but uh, that that's that's not really a a cold feeling. It's just that oh, that's a freezing feeling, which is totally different. But um, uh, all I can say is that it's the codeine. It's just bloody ridiculous in what it does. So what I did is I, I emailed, oh, I emailed my doctor. Um, there's a re repeat prescription, um, repeat prescription function uh, feature that you can do on the website of my doctor's where you can just fill it out and say, can I get more codeine? This is the levels that I want, and uh, I'll pick it up in two days. Fine. But there's a, a page after that says, uh, if you've got any other notes, please fill it out. Uh, so I filled out on the notes saying, um, hi doctor, my back has gone into spasm again. Um, it's definitely piriformis syndrome. Um, I was previously on co codeine or cocodamol. Um, however, as I feel this is more a muscle thing, maybe some form of anti-inflammatories would be far better as I fear I'm having withdrawal symptoms from, uh, or I've had withdrawal symptoms from just the strong painkillers. Uh, maybe if you could give me a call um, and discuss exactly what would maybe a better alternative than just pumping me full of more painkillers. Um, and the annoying thing is, they called me twice today and I didn't have my phone on me! Ah! So I called back and it's just an automated telephone service and I'm like, I have no idea who called me, they didn't leave a voicemail message, I can't speak to the doctor, I'm like, ah! So as well they're saying, oh, I'm gonna have to like book an appointment to go in and say, can I do this and that and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I just thought it would be much less of a waste of the doctor's time if we could just get him to call me over the phone and just say, yeah, we'll prescribe you some uh, super ibuprofen and you can get that from a shop down the road, no problem, off you go. Um, and that would save everyone's time and, and the nation's money. Um, but unfortunately I missed the call and I tried to call back, didn't manage to get it. But but oh, I'm just just now. I'm so tempted to just go home, fill up all my hot water bottles, curl into the bed, um, and uh, and just like pop about three cocodamol and just go, and then fall asleep for the rest of the night. I've, in fact, last night and the night before, I was in bed at seven o'clock. Um, so Logan had just gone to sleep, uh, and I was lying in bed, just kind of going, ha, 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 um, shivering away. So yeah. Uh, Right, and, and there's so much bullshit. Oh, if you look online for uh, piriformis syndrome cures, and you just see so much bullshit of, do this little stretch here where you bring your leg up and do that, or do this other stretch where you pull your leg and you pull this one, and uh, this will help alleviate your piriformis. It's like, no, it won't. That is, that is the most minute effect ever. That's like the effect of having a rubber band pulling on an oil tanker and going, ooh, is the oil tanker coming here? No, it's not, it's not helping whatsoever. Um, so anytime I see these uh, magical cure or instantly cure uh, piriformis syndrome, you're like, but, uh, no, it fucking doesn't. It is, or it, maybe if it does, if you don't have the actual proper serious problem, um, where there's actual damage and there's irritation, there's inflammation and all that kind of stuff. So that, oh, that annoys me so much. So there are two, three stretches um, and one foam rolling exercise to, to really work on, uh, on the butt. Uh, but then at the same time there's also stretches for the calves and the hamstring um, that should work because that's where the nerve goes all the way down uh, and you want to make sure that your muscles are, are uh, at least stretched uh, or foam rolled. Uh, but the thing is you can't even do foam rolling because for foam rolling you have to like Lie on the ground, hands under there, lift yourself up, put your feet on it. Like, oh, this this is so sore. I can't even get in this position to do like a full ten minute foam roll session uh, of slow agonizing pain from the, like the agonizing pain from a foam roller would be joy right now. But effectively, just now I feel like I've got a raging cold and and suffering from in like minus fifty degrees Celsius. I've got the heating on full blast at maximum heat and I'm still shivering away just now. The only thing that's kind of helping me not focus on the pain, because that's the other thing, being able to distract myself is probably one of the, the most benefit, th most beneficial things. Um, so, uh, so talking to you guys just now is, is what's kind of helping me with this drive home. But, uh, but yeah, so if, if, you're, if you're in pain, codeine 
works fantastically, but dear God, be prepared for when you come off it. Especially, and also I think it's especially bad because I've been on it in the past. I think, I think the more times you go back to codeine, the, the quicker the withdrawal symptom. Like if you, if you first time hurt yourself and you go, there's some codeine, and then like two weeks later you're off it, you might not have any withdrawal symptoms. I was on it for six months. And then I've just been on it for, uh, what was it, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, five days, and I'm absolutely destroyed from it. So yeah, just be, uh, if you're if you're taking painkillers, certainly code, and also with, with stuff like coding, because it makes you like, oh, I'm stoned, do not go driving with it either. Um, so fortunately I was off on Monday, and uh, then I hobbled back into work um, on on Tuesday, um, but uh, it's the, ah, uh, just, Ah, it feels like sinus pains right in my head and coldness in the back of my head. My hands are cold. I'm even getting, I even got rain odds in my bloody fingers when I walked down from the bedroom last night down into the living room. I was like, oh, I'm so cold. Kim's like, the heating's on full blast. I'm roasting here. I'm like, oh, oh. And like, it's even got like rain odds, which is where you have a, a hypersensitivity in your extremities and all the blood suddenly gets sucked away. My finger, the tips of my fingers were completely white. I'm like, ah. Oh. So yeah, uh, so fortunately, NSIDS or whatever it is, non uh, anti-inflammatory non-steroidal something. No non NSIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory stuff. Um, fortunately, they aren't um, opiate-based. So if I I can go have uh, ibuprofen, uh, not a problem. Uh, but that just it just barely has any effect. Like the stuff that you get in the count over the counter here is like a pill is 200 milligrams and I'm like mm, that's if I have two that's 400 milligrams that that does zero effect uh, on me just now um, so yeah I think I need some stronger anti because that, that's what they say it's like a lot of times what you need for piriformis syndrome um, is uh, anti-inflammatories as well as forms of physiotherapy um, massage, massaging your butt. Uh, I need to need to get some of that. So I, I text my physio, just saying, when's the earliest you can get me in? Because I was fully under the impression of like, oh, it's just a total spasm. I'll be fine. And then a full week later, I'm like, oh, I, I just want to curl up and just like crawl into a pit and die. Um, so now I'm like, I'm texting my physio, saying, oh yeah, I really need you to shove your fingers right in my butt and and really work away that totally putting that at the front of the video um, so yeah just uh, physio stretching and stretching before you even have the the problem so important um, but uh, more important is understanding the after effects of super duper painkillers uh, so so there you go just a little update cheers bye bye uh, as we got some ibuprofen Lysine, whatever that means, and some more ibuprofen. In the UK, you can only buy two at a time, but oh, when I was holding this in the shop, I couldn't hold them still. Oh. Ah, that seems, ah, seems to have gone. Damn it. Oh. But yeah, I was in the shop, I was like, uh, shake it away. Oh yeah, I was totally thinking, hey, I'll go get myself a beer. And when you are, um, because it's Friday, um, because, uh, but when you are consuming uh, painkillers, um, they take a toll on your liver, which obviously alcohol takes a toll on your liver. Um, and I think ibuprofen is pretty bad for your stomach as well. Don't quite know how that works. I think it's some sort of acid reflux kind of thing going on there. But um, uh, yeah, just if, if you are taking painkillers, don't think heal. I'll add that to some booze. That'll help me out because see later on or the day after morning after your body won't help you won't won't thank you that's for sure